The world is uh, built on nanoscale, and it turns out the first thing maybe I should tell you is how big nanoscale is. If you look at a house, uh, that's about 10 meters in size. Go about 100,000 times smaller and you get to the strand of hair. Go about 100,000 times smaller still and you're going to get to the size of one nanometer, which is the width of a carbon nanotube. Nanomaterials surround us, and is it in the form of these or these materials, molecules, polymers, nanotubes, graphene, quantum dots, nanowires, these are words you might have heard. And indeed, over the past couple of decades, we spend a lot of time understanding their basic chemistry, their basic ways to synthesize them, how to poke them around. We have actually used them for many, many, many years, yet unbeknownst to us. If you look at the stained glass windows, it is metal nanoparticles inside those windows that give them the particular hues, the plasmon resonances, those metal nanoparticles allow you the particular colors. Other options, molecules, well, they've been in pigments. As a matter of fact, all the pigments we know are made of molecular structures. You can take those particular pigments and you can think, well, can I actually not just use them as colorants, but in this particular case, uh, put them inside a pickle and make the pickle glow like a light bulb. These are actually atoms of sodium glowing in this particular structure, but take the same idea and slice the pickle really thin and you have your organic LED display. <clears throat> These are molecules, glowing molecules, electrically excited. Now, we are in the age where we need to figure out ways to make these into forms like this, flexible structures. Here's a quantum dot, a little chunk of stone, two to 10 nanometers in size. Again, electrically excited, giving you an entirely new format of a light bulb that you might be able to make. But what's missing right now today is the ideas of how do you go about manufacturing these new revolutionary ways of generating device structures. Uh, there are some options, a company called Cativa, uh, over in California, a small startup from MIT has actually figured out a way to take a two by two p uh, meter piece of glass and put 100 molecules on top of it in a pixelated fashion in order to give you a large area display. This is their yield jet technology. You can go ahead and say, well, besides printing OLEDs, what else do I want to print? How about a solar cell? I'll go and take some organic dyes, the ones used in car paints, paint them on top of a piece of paper, shine some light and actually power a little electronic device. Uh, indeed, this solar cell works like any other. It's a heterojunction between two material sets, but it's on paper. So you might be able to use this piece of paper like you would any other, put it in a laser printer. The reason why we do this is to perform a stress test. Uh, laser printer gets up to 300 Celsius and we'll choose to print right on top of the cell and see what happens as a result. Uh, this cell really shouldn't work based on the abuse it's suffered, but nevertheless, you shine light and it still works. The concept of what portable power is now is quite changed. Indeed, energy now can be available in any format on any surface that you touch. And as a result, you can start imagining packaging, newspapers, uh, cardboard boxes, uh, money, having an ability to have lightweight cell that actually can be easily deployable into the developing world. Why does it matter? Because the weight of the cell is actually a really important metric if you want to have deployment. A widespread deployment really depends on being able to make large area lightweight structures. How about this cell? This is a transparent cell. I'll actually outline to see, to show you where it is. It's invisible because it only absorbs infrared light. If I put it on top of a Kindle, just take a look up on the voltmeter, zero volts, open it up, 10 volts, cover it again, zero volts. Indeed, there is a transparent cell right on top of that touchscreen. And as a result, you can actually pop it off just so you can see how transparent it is. This particular solar cell can indeed be integrated on any surface without you ever knowing it's even there. Now again, transformational way of thinking of what is it that power can come in, what, what form the power can come in, both aesthetic and yet providing the performance. How about if your glasses happen to have the same solar cell? Would you be able to power a Bluetooth device, a hearing aid? Uh, would you ever need to change batteries? If it's on the side of a building, you can provide about a quarter of the electricity of a typical office building through those 5% efficient windows, or you will never ever have to recharge your Kindle again if it has one of these solar cells on the, on the surface of it. Indeed, a transformational technology. And made of molecules, but another nanomaterial that's also up and coming are the quantum dots. Here's a very simple synthetic step, one step, to synthesize infrared quantum dots. These glow in the parts of the spectrum that we can't see, but light that actually can go through your skin. So what can we use these for? Well, let's test it on a mouse. Let's go and take a look at what Professor Munji Bowendi at MIT has done, taking a mouse, injecting infrared quantum dots and imaging on an infrared camera. You can very quickly see the quantum dots spread and you can see the beating heart and the entire arterial and venal system of the mouse.
without ever cutting it open. You can image the internal organs without ever cutting them open thanks to this new technology. What about visible quantum dots? Well, those are really useful if you want to make really good light bulbs. The one on the right is the quantum dot enhanced light bulb that looks very much like an incandescent light bulb on the left. Why does this matter? Because the quality of light really matters, and these provide you extremely high efficiency light bulbs developed by QDivision, again, a startup of MIT. So looking at these, I think uh, uh, you will see an opportunity uh, for transforming the 21st century. And indeed, what I would expect is that we are at the beginning of a revolution of launching these varieties of nanotechnologies enabled by the new scales of nanomanufacturing. Thank you.